Okay. Good evening and welcome to the April 8th, 2020 Conservation Commission meeting of North, the town of North Andover. Um, before we begin, uh, we'd like to provide an overview to explain tonight's meeting format. Uh, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting and public hearing of the North Andover Conservation Commission will be conducted via remote conference call participation. No in-person attendance or members of the public will be permitted, but every effort has been made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceeding as provided by the uh, governor's order. A reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress may do so by watching their television on North Andover Cam Ed, I believe, or by visiting www.northandover.org. Um, let me just let let me just say one thing to everybody. If you guys could just mute your microphones. If you're not talking, it helps a lot with the background noise. That would be great. Okay. Um, okay. And then let me just do my last set of blurbs here. Um, with respect to the public hearing, which we have one this evening, uh, members of the listening public um, are welcome to, to make comments if they wish during the portion of the um, meeting that's designated for the public hearing by emailing the conservation administrator, which is me, Amy Maxner, at amaxner at northandoverma.gov, uh, which will be displayed on your TV screens um, at the North Andover Cam Ed, uh, the Comcast Channel 99, Verizon 28. Um, your emailed comments will be read aloud during the hearing for consideration and any response as appropriate. Uh, please remember to provide your name and address for the record. Um, so I guess that's it for sort of uh, the introductory. Um, and we can now take a roll call for attendance. And this is Amy Maxner. I'm the conservation agent. Okay. All right. Just to remind that you, you, is Joe Lynch there? Yes, I am. All right, so you, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, ask questions the same order as we did last time. So, right, you, so, can, so you can introduce yourself first. So we can call the roll by the same order. Okay, Joe Lynch. Yeah. Okay. Al? Al. Yeah. Albert Manzi, Al present. Ma All right. What was that with Chairman? Okay. Next one is, should be Deb. Yeah, felt a bit. And you said Sean is not here, correct? Not yet. I haven't heard him yet. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Jack usually goes for us. Jack. Sorry. Yes, Jack Maven's here. Okay. Now, Jack, are you sitting next to Joe or are you sitting next to Deb? Who do you want to be? You want to be first or you want to be yes next to Deb. Let's let's just stick with the order you established. I'll sit next to Deb. Okay. <laughs> and Doug? Uh, no Doug tonight. No Doug. Okay. Uh, before before we start, I I, I want to address the commission. Uh, I've been I've been I've instructed Amy and Ben not to do any site reviews until we get a better grip than this coronavirus because I know hey, she is. Hey Lou. Yes. Yes. Napoli, stop the yes. presses. I, I am on the phone. Who, James who is Bond on? is on the phone. Who? Is that, is that so my that, college? That's, that's, Sean that's, Sean, McDonough. that's Sean McDonough yes. present. Oh, yes. Sean. Yes. Excellent. Oh, well, Excellent. I'm sorry, Sean. Yeah. Yeah, Amy took the advance notice of muting me, so she did a good job on that one. So, <laughs> okay. I, so, so Jack, I'm going to put you in front of Joe again. Okay. Okay. Next to Deb, I'm good. All right, okay. so I'm, gonna move, I'm gonna move Jack over to Joe's side and put, put Sean next to Deb. Okay. Thanks, okay. Okay. Right. 
Hey, right, Lou, look, just, get, just to get the order right, Jack is one. Jack is one. I yes. am two. Al yes. is three. Yes. You okay. are four. Yes. Deb is five. And Sean is six. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. All right. Now, did everybody hear what I said about not having Amy and Ben do site reviews uh, until we get a better grip on this coronavirus? Are you in agreement with that? Um, I, I think I'm not, I, not, a, not a hundred percent. I think maintaining social distancing is, is imperative, but I think okay. there may be needs from time to time to, to, okay. to, to do things in a more timely fashion. But you know, if, if someone's demanding a need to be seen or have a sit down meeting, we refuse those. But if we get a report of a ongoing violation, I think we need to investigate that. And, and, but at the same token, not have any, Violation of social distancing. Okay, very good. Did you uh, catch that, Amy? Well, because we, yes, cause we do, we do have an outstanding violation that we can discuss later. Uh, All right, Lou, Lou L. Yeah, Got I have it. a question. And that's just my, that's just my, my opinion. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I wanna, I, I wanna chime in on Joe. I wanna ask a question, uh, Amy. Uh, do you guys have uh, protective equipment, masks, etc. You can wear? Uh, I do actually. Yes, I do. Yep. So my, my, my opinion would be if you have PPE, I would leave it, leave it up to your discretion. If okay. you think it's safe to do so, and I would, I would endorse it as long as you think it's safe to do so. And you have the stuff you need. Okay. Sure. All right. That's fine. Sure. And this is Sean, just to add to that, I would also, you know, put in a risk benefit analysis with any of these kind of inspections. I mean, if it's something incredibly minor, um, then, you know, give it the weight that it deserves. But if it's something that mm -hmm. could be significant, again, give it the weight it deserves. Yeah, agreed. Okay. All right. All right. So, so, uh, so, Amy, I guess that the feel of the commission is to use your discretion. Okay. And, and, yep. and, and, don't, and don't feel that you, uh, that, it's, that, uh, the company is more important than the, than the individual. So you, you make your own call. All right. Yep. Thank you very much. Thanks. You're welcome. And, and also on that, I would say, Amy, if you have any question of whether or not you should go out, reach out to the chairman or vice chair or somebody else. Um, if it's something you don't feel comfortable with, or you think you should go out to, and you're not quite sure. I mean, definitely communicate, okay. I would say. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, we, we, Great. We've been, we've been communicating with this little chairman. I've been communicating with uh, Amy, uh, pretty regularly on certain certain issues yep excellent excellent okay. so it's been working okay great okay all right, all right. good so it's all yours amy okay all righty so uh we have two sets of meeting minutes march 11th and march 25th that you should have received by email and they have been reviewed by both uh me and deb Okay, so we need a motion. So we need a motion. I'll move it. Al Manzi will move the minutes, both sets. And I second okay. it. And, okay. And who's, this, who's the second? Deb Falsevic. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Right. And that's unanimous. All right. All right, next up is a public, continued public hearing for 800 Massachusetts Avenue. Uh, let's see, we had our first public hearing on March 11th, I believe, and uh, the project involves um, installation of geothermal wells, uh, extension of the paved parking area at the rear of the building, um, a paver patio behind the building, and <clears throat> replacement of a drain pipe, and walkway. Uh, okay. The plan has been revised to move the all of the wells outside of the buffer zone. Um, and the, the, the paper patio remains within the 50 foot no build. Uh, and part a portion of the driveway extension and all of the walkway elements are in the buffer zone, but between 50 and 100. 
with a couple of little tree removals on the rear of the building. So, so there's nothing in the 25, correct? Right, other than access to, to uh, install the paver patio. So, so there is, there is going to be a waiver, correct? Or they're asking for one? They're asking for a waiver for the patio, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just, just another quick question. How big is the patio? I'm sorry. The patio. This is Jack Sullivan. The patio is 460 square feet. 460 square feet. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. Joe, uh, Jack, I'm sorry. Jack, you have any questions? Uh, I just, I, 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 oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Wrong Jack. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is Jack Maven. Um, I like the, uh, I like the change bringing all the, all the, the wells outside the buffer zone. That's uh, definitely a positive impact. Um, the, uh, we didn't discuss the pervious paver patio uh, last time we discussed this and uh, so I do have a few questions about that um, okay okay it's 460 square feet um, I, I noticed that uh, you had you had put together a waiver checklist and um, and it noted that the area is currently dis disturbed and there's some concrete poles in there can you can you give us a better idea of, of what that disturbance is right now? And, and why, are, why are the concrete poles in there? I can answer that. Uh, Jack Sullivan, yeah. So the, those, concrete, um, those concrete posts, let's say, those were for a past HVAC unit that's gone now. So those, those were like foundation support for the HVAC components. But the posts themselves were never removed. Um, gotcha. And when, it, when I say it was previously disturbed, it, it's it's a grass area. There's no trees to be removed. It's it's an area that over time has been graded out, loamed, and seeded. Um, so it, it's there's, there's no native vegetation to be removed or anything like that. That's it's already a okay. Um, that's good. And um, I thought there was some kind of a so there was like an air handler or something out there, a compressor. So uh, okay, that's the previous disturbance. Um, the um, I, I guess you know I think the pervious the pervious design is good, um, but it 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 gives me an idea of of I mean two it gives me two concerns. Number one, it basically touches the 25 foot no disturb zone, um, so you know field survey and things like that. Um, you know, we oftentimes make mistakes in, in the field and, and get into the get into the spot where we're not supposed to be. So I'd, I'd ask you to consider moving that, you know, like at least a couple feet away from the uh, from the 25 foot just to um, just to give it, you know, a little bit of a safety uh, factor. Um, so that's my that's one concern. My second concern is um, you know, you are you are right up against the 25. It's pretty flat, and it's it's wet. You know, on that adjacent lot over there is is this pervious paver patio. I mean, it is it really going to drain? Because <laughs> uh, you know you have a pretty high water table there, and um, you know. Uh, to work the way you want it to. So, could you comment on that? Sure, Jack Sullivan again. Um, the wetland, it, it is a level grass area behind the building, but the wetland itself steps off. There's actually a, from the edge of the lawn to the wetland area, there's a two and a half to three foot grade change at that point. So, it, you know, it would appear that the water table is about three feet below the existing ground surface where the patio is going to be going. So when they construct this and, and, and they construct it with a, a porous base, there'll still be separation between the bottom of the, the base material and the groundwater table so that water can move through and purify before it gets to the water table itself. Okay, so it's not as flat as I remember it. No, there's a slope right 
right when you get to where the, the existing tree line is and where the wetland flags are, it drops right off. It, I think there were some okay. pictures that probably don't have fun of it, but it does drop off two and a half to three feet in elevation. Yeah, that's, that's, that's more than I thought. Okay, that, those are all my questions, Lou. Okay. Thank, thank you, Jack. So. Joe? Sorry, I was I was still muted. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> that's a switch, huh? Hey. <laughs> uh, I had the same concerns that uh, that Mr. Maben had, and I, I think they've been clarified with with the change. And I'm actually drawing attention to uh, the existing four-inch drain outlet pipe that that kind of supports Jack Sullivan's comment that uh, that has to drop off. Otherwise, that foundation drain wouldn't drain anything. So. I think I'm seeing supporting documentation for that. Uh, but so what I'm seeing is you've, re, you've moved the well field over to within the paved area of the existing parking lot, and which is a great move, by the way, and that you're going to temporarily put your drilling waste into the two dumpsters that are up in the front just to keep them away from the wetland areas, correct? Correct. Okay. And those, and, and those will be watertight, Joe. Those... Those dumpsters, uh, they're, they're watertight dumpsters that if they have to dewater, they'll go into those and then they'll have them removed from the site. Okay. Um, be, now, I, I think of wells as like a domestic drinking water well, which has a well head that extends above grade by about 18 inches or so. These are not. These, these wells are flush and capped, so though they're in the paved travel way, you could drive right over them, correct? Correct. Okay, so it's not so much that you're displacing parking, you're you're just simply adding, well, are you just making the parking more functional? Why is it we're moving the, the parking that much closer to the back of the lot? Right now, if you, if you look at the existing pavement back there, those spaces are severely undersized. They, they wouldn't, okay. you know, you don't have like a 18 foot stall, a 24 foot travel lane, and then an 18 foot stall. It's undersized. So okay. they, they would just, and most of that pavement expansion in the back is outside the 100 feet. But they, they're just trying to maximize, you know, make, make it more of a formal parking lot that meets some sort of a standard than it does now. Okay, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I was going to note the same thing is, is, uh, you know, the the handicap spot in the walkway is in the hundred foot, and everything else is really outside of the hundred. So this, if yeah. if they're ever going to do it, this is the time to do it. Yeah. Um, how the drill um, slurry that comes up? How is it conveyed to the dumpsters? You know, in in a bucket. Isn't there some vulnerability of slop? And I'm really not. I'm not really seeing any uh, any erosion control whatsoever. Oh, actually, because the grade goes up in that back area, huh? Yeah. Jack, the, the retaining wall, that grade goes up. That goes so up. Is there, any, is there any possibility of, oh, of um, okay. well, well drilling material finding its way to the back corner and around towards the wetland? And, and mm -hmm. if there is, shouldn't we just put some diagonal erosion control between the building and the retaining wall just to hold it in? We, we could add that. I don't have a problem with that. Like okay, I, I'm all, I'm all I, set. I, did, I didn't extend the erosion control right to the 100 foot buffer zone, so we, we could have that extended. It is going up a hill, but we could extend it right up to the 100 foot and towards the retaining. Sure. No, Jack, I'm not trying to make work for anybody. So what you're saying is the, the re erosion control that was behind the patio continues around the building. You brought it up gradient, which is at 108, which is well above the 102 parking area where the wells are drilled. Correct. Yeah, you don't need additional rose control. I'm sorry, I, I didn't pick that up. That was it was picking up that corner on the back way back end. Okay. I, I'm all set, Lou. Okay, uh, Al. Hey, uh, hey, everybody. Um, Jack, I've read I've read the, uh, the the waiver request worksheet, and uh, I'm satisfied with the with the waiver request. I'm satisfied with the uh, with the worksheet and the location of the patio. So I, I have no objections. Okay. Thanks, Al. And just just to add something, because I did I did call Amy earlier today, and I did talk to the design team on this. 
I felt we had to beef up the waiver request a bit. So the, the applicant is willing to plant 10 native species uh, within the 25 foot, no disturbed zone out towards the rear of the building where the patio is. So if that's a condition of the approval that 10 native species are to be planted, that's something we're willing to do to, to provide enhancement plantings in that area. Always, always in favor of enhancements. Thank you. Okay. All right. Jack, I, I, you all set, Al? I, I am. I'm good, Lou. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jack, I have, I have a couple of questions. Um, the uh, uh, When you excavate the area for the deck, uh, you, you're probably going to use a foot of, of gravel or some type of stone or on the, as the base of the previous favors? That's correct. Do I, do you ever, is there a stockpile on a plant? You're going to haul it out as you dig it. Oh, that'll have to come right out. Okay. All right. And no stock. Yeah, have to come right out. Okay, so it's going to come right out, and then you're going to bring the gravel, gravel and after you dig the hole. Yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, is that uh, uh, the, the slurry, uh, you know it's going to be mud. So you're going to put it, you're going to put it in a watertight container. The problem is with that is you got to let the set. You, I'm sure you're not going to truck it out right away. And it, if you do that, the water is going to rise to the top. So what's going to happen is as soon as the guy goes to fall away, the water is going to go right over the tailgate. So either some, either you're going to have to skim off the top of the water to, so you don't get any on Mass Ave or, or wherever you're going, um, uh, unless you're doing, you're doing it somewhere different that I don't know of. Well, we had a, a, a conversation with the well driller, and we, we told them we can't have any water being sent out towards Mass Ave. So whatever they have to do to keep, keep water on the site, like one of the dumpsters is in a grass area, so if they went to pick it up, you know, then, then some of the water could go into the grass, I guess. So we don't want any water going out towards Mass Ave. Um, so Correct. They, that we were told that would not happen. And that, that's why they have the two dumpsters on site, that they feel that would handle it. Okay, because as I watched the minutes from the other meeting and uh, uh, Mr. Lynch voices, that it was going to be a lot of mud because they can hold 300 feet. And, and Mr. Manzi voiced his uh, concerns about mud on uh, Mass Ave. So, I mean, yeah. so those things have to be addressed and, and, and documented in order conditions or, or the pre-construction meeting with Amy, whatever, or however you do it. Um, yeah. and, and, all right. And the only question, uh, one more question I have, is there any way of moving, like Jack said, moving the uh, patio just a little to, to Give us a little bit of leeway on the 25 foot. Yes. Yeah. There right, is. right now we're, we're like 26 feet off, so we we have some flexibility to make it like 20. We just don't want it, like Jack said, to be inside the 25. So if they can make it 27, 28 feet, you know, we still keep the same square footage, but a little different shape on the patio. Just minor. We can do that. that all right. That would be helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hey, that, uh, Lou. Lou, this yes. is Joey. Just a just a follow up on your question, if you don't mind. Um, yes. I, I think Lou, you hit on a very practical question, and that's the uh, the movement of the dumpsters. And I guess it really begs the question, rather than relying on, you know, some level of water stilling out and, and decanting out, you know, is it is it not possible to use frack tanks, or did you not con con did you find them cost prohibitive? Or because I think getting the water out of them is an important thing and, and just use the tanks for, for the solids, the, the mud. We, we actually found it cost prohibitive. That's why if all these wells were inside the 100 foot buffer, then we, then we, would, we felt we would have had to use a frack tank. And when we started running the cost on that and then trying to support a waiver for the wells within the 50 foot no build zone, it just became problematic, and that's when we came up with this idea of moving everything outside. Um, it was it was really a, co a cost thing, and then we couldn't support our previous request with an alternative analysis because we actually do have an alternative that's less costly and still provides the same function for the building. So, what I'm thinking is, so there's no really there's really no such thing as a watertight dumpster. 
and, and I think we all recognize that unless you line it and seal it off in some way. So what I'm envisioning is you're going to use a dump. You're going to use a Al? dumpster as a frack tank. Yeah, and Al. Hello, yes. this is Jimmy. This is Jimmy D'Angelo. I know James Warden's on the phone, but we met with the um, the driller, and so we're going to have two watertight uh, containers there. But the driller is also going to have a pump uh, a pumper on standby, depending on how much water gets pulled out. So he's going to abide by no water, leaving those tanks. Uh, and so if need be, well, but that's why we have two. We'll pump one down. And if we need be, he'll come back and pump the other one down. So we just have silt left in the in the container. Okay, I I think it was Lou that was talking about it, but but uh, I understand. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Lou I, raised the original question. It was Joe, uh, Joe Lynch that raised that was continuing the conversation. So I, okay, you're going to use the. You're going to pull up the drillings. You're going to bucket them over with a. Bobcat or a small loader, get them into the dumpsters, you know, some great distance. And uh, unless you, are you going to pump from the well drilling location to these dumpsters? I just I'm having trouble con understanding how you're going to transfer mm. the spoils from one location around the building to something in front of the building. It just so, seems impractical. So there's there's two. Uh, sets of spoils. One says the solid, which is the, the the rock, and that'll be stockpiled. The water uh, is going to be pumped into the tanks. Into these dumpsters. And it'll be into the dumpsters, and they'll be okay. held there, and there'll be additional sediment that comes out of it. But uh, the the uh, when the when the first one gets full, we go to the second mm -hmm. one. And we call the pumper to take the uh, the water away. And as far as uh, as the solids, that's going to be picked up with the uh, bobcat and trucked off. Three hundred and fifty foot depth. So what do you what are you figuring? Two or three days per well location of actual drilling. I'm going to have to default to James on that. James, are you on? Yeah, probably about half that. Average of maybe one and a half days per per hole. So we're looking at something on the order of a week to a week and a half operation. And yeah. Okay, I understand you what you what you're doing. I think we're going to obviously be. Keep our fingers crossed on on on, on the handling of the materials. <laughs> because I, I, I'll, I'll, Lou Napoli, the chairman, I have I have a hard time believing it because now we, I I believe that there was no there wasn't a stockpile on the plant, and and you stockpile on the slurry for, on 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 the, even on the pavement, water's going to leak out of it. I mean, it, it it's it's mud all the time. It, uh, Lou, he's stockpiling it in a in a tub, uh, and then the water gets pulled out of that also. So you're gonna but he's not showing us that tub. He's not showing us where that is. I know, but all that activity is outside the hundred, and uh, well, our, our concern should be whether we impact Mass Avenue or the driveway or anything else. But well, we got to go through the building before we hit the resource area. Well, I know you go, but I'm just saying if you get the container with, with the with the mud in, inside, uh, the water the water leak is is you're gonna have, they're gonna pump the water out after it rises to the top. Is that what you're saying? Well, they'll be they'll be pumping they'll be pumping the water into the into the holding tanks as they're drilling. Okay. okay yeah. Where's the slurry going? And where's the slurry going? The same, the same container. The slurry stays in the container and then gets picked up uh, and then gets uh, trucked off. So, you, so you have one container for water and one container for, uh, for the slurry. We have two containers for the water, one container for the slurry. Okay, okay. Well, we that that wasn't. I don't think that's Joe, like Joe said. I don't think that, that was conveyed to us. Um, okay, are you comfortable with that, Joe? 
Joe, are you comfortable with that? Hello? I think he's on I think he's on mute again. You can't hear me? Dark. Should I move? Yes, I was on mute. I'm sorry. I'm all um yeah, go around and ask the rest of the questions. I let me come back at the very end. Let me I'm trying to figure something out right here. Okay. Uh, all right, so we need we need Deb next. Okay, I just wanted to say um, I'm glad you guys are figuring all this out because this is way beyond my experience. So I appreciate everyone, um, everyone's support. And also, I did uh, read the waiver and I agree with the waiver that was documented. That's it. Okay, uh, Sean. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yes, good, because my phone still tells me is muted. So a couple questions. So this is the old printing museum, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, and what's 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 the intended use of the building now? James, do you want to answer that? I. What's the who? I missed that. Though just the, the word. The, the, what's, the, what's the what's the intended use of the building? Oh, it well, we have our director on the line too, Brian. It's going to be the headquarters for the uh, Historical Society, and it's going to have uh, a small theater in it and exhibit wings, the archive of the Historical Society, and all sorts of great things. It'll be a very public space as, as the society is now, and we hope for the grounds also to be a pretty public space all around the building, especially that patio in the back. And the front yard as well. And I the, see the main, goal, the main goal of all this work is to have a very environmental and cost efficient long term source to run the building and maintain the building. That's why all the work we're doing is aimed at that. You see the windows going in, the geothermal well, the solar's going up. These are all to make it uh, economically and environmentally sustainable operation. Does that help? And, um, so is is the has the ownership of the building changed since it was the printing museum? No, no, it's no this, North Andover yeah, Historical Society. Still, yeah, this, this, this is yeah, this this is Brian Howard. Uh, no, the uh, the the building is completely owned by the by the North Andover Historical Society, and um, I concur with everything that James said that we're going to be moving uh, uh, most of our operations and public activities over to that facility. Uh, once it's uh, once it's ready to go, so we'll have our exhibits, our research um, uh, activities, collection storage, and a lot of our public events will be taking place there. And I see a lot of the buildings already in the 25, and a good portion of it's within the 50. But what is the purpose of the patio? Intended purpose? Jimmy. Well. The intended purpose of the patio is for uh, a contemplative area to sit outside and enjoy the view of the wetlands. Uh, but it's an it's an outdoor extension space, and I think in our, our response to the waiver, uh, we requested that uh, we looked at other places for it, uh, uh, for the outdoor space to go, and it just uh, was in conflict with all the parking and circulation. And uh, it just provides an opportunity right by the door and right by the foyer uh, for, to sit out there and enjoy the uh, enjoy the outdoors as well as enjoy the view of the wet. Now, now, if you guys owned the property before, why wasn't this contemplated for the prior use of the property? The, the building the, was uh, the time. I'm sorry, I, I didn't. I, did you say the time? This, 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 this is Brian Howard again. Um, yep. The uh, building was not at that time utilized by the North Andover Historical Society. So this is uh, the first time that uh, we've really taken a look at how we're going to use the facility uh, for our own internal purposes. Got it. So you leased the property out to the printing museum and now you're changing the intended use of it and you're looking for a waiver to do that? Uh, I yeah, uh, I can't comment on yeah 
Yeah, I, I can't comment on uh, on any of the ancient history of the of the building, but what we are looking to do is to reinvent our facility, utilizing that that structure and that property to uh, to do so. So it was it was under a lease before now, and now you're is the landlord and owner of the property. You're um, using it for your own purposes. Fair, fair to say? That's correct. That's correct. I, I, I think so. Yeah. 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 So. You know, I, I appreciate the intended use of it. Um, I'm, I'm a hard, I'm, I'm a hard guy to sell on waivers, but I see a lot of your properties already within the 50 and 25, to say the least. So, what, what, would, what could you do? Could you put up, a, you know, something somewhat aesthetically pleasing, whether it's a, a post and rail a PVC fence or wooden fence or something between, you know, where you have that patio proposed and, you know, right along maybe where the patio would end. So it could keep some distance from the wetlands we're trying to protect. Are we afraid yeah. of people, people walking over there and falling into the creek or something? No, no. We're afraid of – we, we, we kind of keep – I let me rephrase that. I keep kind of sacred. The 25-foot no disturb. You know, we have a lot of homeowners come in front of us trying to go in into that area, hundreds of them over the years that we've been on this commission. So we don't take going into that area lightly, even though you have some property in there. So what I'm asking is, would you be prepared to put up a post and rail fence along the 25 foot to serve as a permanent barrier between your proposed uh, patio that is for a totally new purpose? Um, I mean, that's, that's, that's possible to do, but it would it would very much spoil the look of it. And I think there's a misinterpretation this is a mowed lawn. The mowed lawn goes within three feet of the wetland, and then there's a big drop off. It drops four feet down, and then there's the wetland. It's a it's a manicured mowed. It's mowed every week. The mowed lawn right up to that point. So I think there's a misconception about what the site really is. Uh, Lou Napoli, chairman. Uh, we've had we've had resistance to uh, barriers before. Uh, if, if you work in re recollection, we had uh, the, the, with, with the, I think it's the Park Bernard House, and uh, they were they wanted to put stones, and 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 after we had many discussions, they put up a post and like a two by six along the uh, or two by eight or whatever it was, along to keep people from driving over the edge or or snow people plowing over over the edge or. And I'm in harmony with you. I I I think that some should be like some should be put back there, and and a pole with a two by eight or whatever. I forget what what it was. And uh, I I and I think it's aesthetically pleasing when you look at it that way. If you look at the one on Osgood Street, you'll know you know what I mean. Right, right, dear applicant. I I really don't want people going down. I'm just, you know, the fact that it's manicured lawn all the way to the wetland is disturbing to me, actually. Not pleasing. Oh. So, um, so I am not in favor of your waiver. Well, this, I mean, this lawn has been mowed for 60 years since the building was built. It's, it's, it's right. flat at the level of the building, and then the wetland edge starts three feet before the wetland. I mean, are you suggesting that we let the lawn just grow up and let the wetland come right up to the side of the building with tangles and bar barbary? And I don't think that'll work. The building has been in horrible condition for years, and we're trying to turn it around. And last thing we want to do is let let you know unplanned greenery just take over right up up to the corner of the building. I mean, corner of the building is in the 25 foot zone. The lawnmowers go around that corner and they mow that lawn. It it seems to be you know well kept and you know no one bothers the no one goes near the edge because they don't want to go go in there and there's there's some greenery along there. Is it possible we could plant some plantings along that edge on the on the level to make an edge to the lawn? I, that, that, I that's what, that's what we were proposing, Sean, doing like ten enhancement shrubs. To try to to enhance that 25 foot zone with some plantings. I understand but, that, but, Jack. But, 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 but I think I know so, in the, you want a physical barrier. But I think if you put a physical barrier right up to the patio, 
that that would take away any it, you know they'd be looking right at a barrier if this it would take away the whole intent of what they're proposing yeah well i mean so, uh suppose we suppose we did like a small low uh low seating wall or something and then put some signs that said you know resource area do not enter you know so they do that on golf courses uh so that it's know that this is the intended space for human beings and we won't we uh, we won't mow it anymore uh, uh, i guess you know we'll just plant it up um, so how far out from the from where it's currently mowed are you prepared to, to bring it out and you know if you're not thinking about it i thought a post and rail fence would be the least obstructive thing but if you would prefer something like a you know a small low retaining wall to make that separation personally speaking that's something i'd be interested in but i find most applicants prefer um more of a post and rail fence but maybe you're not most applicants well no how are we going to hold the lawn the fence in the way well i don't think i don't think they're suggesting that we mow the lawn anymore uh, james uh it, i think it's only are we going to weed, uh, we weed whack it three times in the season i mean you can't let the the wetland come up over the into the 25 foot zone and come right up and kiss the building and foil it again that's what what's been going on for years it was rotted out animals were running into dormers upstairs and we got to take the green away from the building al this is joe i i've been i've been sitting back listening to this this uh back and forth and it was becoming evidently clear to me that their intention was to always want to continue to mow this and in the the fly in the ointment here is had they done nothing to disturb the area back there we probably wouldn't say much about their continued mowing it the fact that they've got a application before us that does do some work in the buffer zone opens it up somewhat for us if they were doing just the thermal geothermal field but we we might be inclined to still let them continue to mow it it's by virtue of them looking to put the patio in there does it change it changes everything it, it makes it an improvement in the in the in the area that shouldn't be disturbed and we we do in fact would expect that 25 in that area to go back natural now i'm hearing loud and clear the historical society doesn't want to do that and they understand that that means that's a that's a that's a deal killer you get no patio if, if you want to continue to mow it and keep the vegetation under control the patio has to go away that's what i'm hearing and I, I've heard the diatribe back and forth from different presenters and different commissioners, but I but I hear that physical barrier isn't the issue. You want to continue to control the vegetation for building and maintenance and management, and I understand that. But if that's your desire, there's no patio. Am so I am I, correct, am I am I am I summarizing that correctly, Lou? Well, I, I, Mr. Mc, Lou Napoli, Chairman. Now, Mr. McDonald is expressing he's not going to go be in favor of the waiver for the patio based on what he's hearing. And 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 and, and to be truthful, I, I, I'm in harmony with them. I I think there should be that, and I, and, I, and, it, and it's, it's low enough. That one that we had uh, Miss Legassi build on on uh, Osgood Street, it, it made the difference and made that parking lot look better. Than what it was before, and and all it was was just like telephone poles, and it was a two by ten or two by twelve. I forget what the size it was, and they they stained it, and it looked it looked wonderful, and and, and, and we should do something. If, if he, they're enhancing the back to create more more population, if what they're saying, more people to come and enjoy all this stuff, that means more people. And it and it more it jeopardizes the, the wetlands as we know it. So that that's well, why I'm I'm are, agreeing with the, John. The people are gonna stay on the on the patio. We as Jimmy said, we could put put a little sign or some little pots or barriers around the patio to contain people and tell them to stay in the patio. That you realize we removed the giant, horrible, disgusting, rusty air conditioner unit. With, you know, air conditioning oils, who knows what was in it. We had to remediate it from inside the building. We had that by hand, people on foot, take that apart, haul it off. Those are what the four posts are. We're trying to respect the area, the wetland, make the whole place pretty and welcoming and a nice place for people to enjoy all the way around. And I don't, I seem to think they're 
if we were all standing there right now, six feet apart, I'm sure we could we could come up, people would understand what we're trying to do. I don't know if the pictures show this, but it seems like there should be a way to people have built enjoy looking at the wetlands, sitting on the patio, go in and out of the door, which goes to the building, and stay outside the 25, and yet not have big barriers and fences everywhere, because that kind of spoils the whole thing. And there seem to think of some way we could figure this out. And, and, and who's the name, what's the name of the person just speaking there? Sorry, that was James. James. So, James, I, I appreciate your perspective, and I hope you understand. My comments have been kind of in an effort to try to work with you a little bit on this. But the fact that, you, you know, in, initially you indicated people were going to come out in the patio and migrate down onto the grass. You said that within 10, 15 minutes ago. So you, you've given me a good idea of what the intended purposes of this, and I've discussed with you the prior uses of the property and how this is really a change in it. And what I want you to appreciate from my perspective is you are one file coming in front of us that we try to give a lot of attention to, but we have to be consistent with how we deal with every file that comes in front of us. And we have heard the pleas that you've been speaking about from hundreds of applicants in the past. So as you talk about what this means to you, please understand our perspective as we go through this. I'm sure your engineer, Jack, understands our perspective because he comes in front of us all the time. So, um, so please give so, us some thoughts. So, we, Sean, this again, this is Jimmy D'Angelo, uh, and we have, and I think that's why you know we spent the time that we did on our waiver application, and we try to point out that this is the existing condition, and what we're trying to do is leave it uh, in a better condition, a better from the wetlands perspective, uh, both in uh, what was there before by taking down. Um, uh, the mechanical devices that left those uh, concrete posts uh, and also protect uh, from the 25 uh, foot um, to the to the resource area. So uh, I'm uh, I'm agreeable and I'm sure that the society would be also to hardening up, pulling the patio back somewhat and hardening up the edge so that it, it is clear that this is where you, know, there, you should not cross this line. Um, and I think Jack added the piece about let's plant up that space so that it doesn't look like a lawn, uh, but it looks like uh, uh, the edge of a resource area. And somewhere in there is, uh, I hope, the makings of an order that you're uh, happy with, that you're comfortable with, that is consistent with your previous rulings that uh, we're, what we're leaving this resource better protected with this filing than ha if we just continue doing what we were doing, which is, uh, and, and I, I, again, we don't have the detail of the, of this patio. We keep calling the patio. It's just an outdoor area. And you know, we could end up putting, I don't know, we've got this big slab of, of granite that we found. We could put a little, uh, uh, um, seating area out there and, and leave it lawn. Uh, it, uh, it, it is meant to be uh, pervious and it's meant to be some resource that is consistent with what our vision is for this building, which is a community building uh, o uh, opening its arms to North Andover uh, community and the, and the green uh, and put some kind of interpretive uh, uh, plaque out there that talks about the green, that talks about the trail uh, that uh, that well, that's just that goes through the wetland area. That's just on the other side. Um, but something about the history of of that area and how this building was set here, and then hopefully allows you to come inside and enjoy uh, that you'll be inside and enjoying it. So I'm hoping that the the commission can see its way uh, to. Uh, I, I recognize your your responsibilities and and the filings that have come uh, before you, but hope that you can find some way uh, that you can be consistent and that uh, our, our, our waiver request is based on leaving this in a much better condition uh, from the uh, protection of the wetlands uh, uh, from whence we, uh, we found it. Um, with that, I guess it is, it's your vote. Uh, if the patio goes away, the patio goes away. So then we'll still have lawn out there and I guess we'll still be 
Uh, we're still gonna, I, I hope we're still gonna use the back door and hopefully get some kind of seating area. Um, but I think that what we've uh, put together by pulling the onerous activity outside um, and, uh, and, try and protecting uh, the 25 foot line and planting it up is hopefully something that you can hold your, hang your hat on. Now, Jim, Jim, Jimmy, what you're talking about. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. Well, let's, let, Sean, Sean, we're not going to settle this. We'll have, we'll have more discussion. I'd like to get some input from Doug, if I could. Sure. Doug? Um, yeah, this is Jack. Oh, I'm sorry, Did Jack, you call? Did you call uh, on me, Lou? No, well, you, you were first before Joe, right? Yeah, I was, but I'm listening yeah. to the discussion, and I, I think yeah, but I'll, I just I just want to get some input from from Doug, and then we'll we'll go through, we'll go through this again. Oh, oh, okay. Doug, you mean Doug, Doug Saul? Doug Saul. Doug, yeah. Doug oh, I'm not, sorry, he's not Doug, yet. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's not. Sorry. He's not with I us. Did, it's okay. I, I didn't see him. I should know better. <laughs> 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 All right, Jack. I, I know Jack has some questions, and I do too. But go ahead, Jack. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I was just going to make a suggestion. Um, where this is a previously mowed lawn in the no disturb zone, um, we have had that situation before. It's very rare. Um, and and in those cases where um, you know there's there's really not much room, what we've done is we've agreed to a smaller no disturb zone. So, uh, you know, for instance, maybe a, a 10 foot no disturb zone instead of a 25 foot no disturb zone. Um, so what my suggestion is, is if for consideration, I know we're not gonna solve it right now, but for consideration, you know, um, we could use one of those commonly used low, low profile, um, loose set stone walls, maybe at a, maybe at about a 10 foot setback from the from the uh, wetland line uh, it would be low enough to allow uh, visibility from the patio out to the natural area that they're looking to survey and uh, and I think it would be a, a an, an attractive feature for the site so um, I would just ask for you know all parties to consider that as a, as a potential alternative thank you Jack uh, Joe I'm gonna. Yeah, I am off mute. I, I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna get off the patio for a second and just ask some questions on on the wells because I'm still. I was circling back on the dumpster question. So, again, I don't know geothermal wells at all, but I'm I'm envisioning they're about six inches in diameter. Perhaps uh, can someone shed a light how big they are? Yes, six inches. They are six inches. So if we're going to around around 350 feet. We're only looking at like 70 cubic feet of solids that are coming up, plus the plus the pump water, the drill water, and, and any water that does come up. So, we're, so from a solids perspective, if you're segregating it, what we really are looking on a per well basis is some sort of a stockpile area that's capable of handling 70 cubic feet of solids. So, and, and we're not seeing that. I, I had heard that the solids are separated and that the water is pumped to the dumpsters, but but I just want to make sure that that we're not putting any of that inside the 100 foot zone. And um, and in reality, if you put those solids behind where you're drilling, you're throwing them in the way for the next wells. So my guess is, is without a well directed no no pun intended well directed operation, the spoils might end up in the 100 foot no disturb. Of the, of the solids and then you're still dealing with uh you know x number of gallons that come up in well water i can't begin to estimate that but a dumpster i can say i can estimate the biggest one being about 40 cubic yards that's only um 1080 cubic feet so that that's not a lot of gallons of water especially when you're looking at a a, a, a well with being drilled at the depth so i i think the practicality of having a, a pump truck come in as a dumpster is filled, I think the, that pump truck might end up being on site almost all the time. It's almost like a tank truck. Pump it right into the tank truck, drive it away, and have another tank truck waiting. It, it almost seems that way. But my fear is, is not well managed. We are 
those first two wells are literally right outside the hundred. So I, I think there's a, a vulnerability that I'm not comfortable with, especially not seeing a stockpile area. The way the way the grades work, the water run will run right to the corner of the building. We can't have it. It'll run into the building, into the bulkhead, and down in the basement. It doesn't run out to the corner around the back there. The, the grade goes up there. So that you'd have to have like a swimming pool, like six inches of water in the corner of the building before it made it around the back. By then, I will be out there screaming to get long before that. If there's an inch of water, the guys have to stop. I mean, because it'll be going in the building. And that's five or six inches of, you know, 30 by 30 by five inches of water before it can ever get around near the corner of the building. Just the way the grades are. This is the problem with the building. All the water runs into the building from the parking lot, the way it's picked, so that we can use that to our advantage as a safety for this. But uh, we can't have the water going to the building. So we have many reasons not to let water go anywhere but where it's supposed to go, which the well driller has assured us they'll control the water. That's, that's their business. Okay, this, so this that piece. No, I am going to. I, I, I'm just dealing with real numbers here. I, I'm looking at uh, if it's 70 cubic feet of, of solids coming up out of the well shaft. We're, we're looking at an area, if you typically use a stockpile area 20 by 20, 400, so we're, we're looking at something that's going to be probably four feet high for just one well in a 20 by 20 stockpile area. By the time you get six, you're looking at something that's a pretty darn good size pile. So I think there needs to be some discussion about where that stockpile is. You need to show us where that's going to be. And as long as it's outside of our zone, I guess we're, we're okay. But uh, you, I, I really want you to show us where you're going to stockpile the material. Because uh, just a simple math means this is a pretty good-sized mountain, assuming it's all dry to begin with. And it's going to be, it's it's going to be wet. Be it's not, not going to be dry. <laughs> and it's not going to be dry. That's, that's exactly my point. So this is, this is an awful lot of material coming up. And and and, and, not, and you know, and you're not. And it's not unusual for us to ask for a stockpile area. Yeah. No, Jack. Jack, Jack, just would you show a stockpile area on on your plan and uh, um, and uh, and make it as far away from the hundred foot as possible? And and that uh, stockpile is going to be moved. Uh, the landscape is going to be with the with his the <laughs> bobcat. And with his truck on site with each well, as so we're not trying to uh, stockpile all six wells. It's going to be taken away um, as they're drilling. Right, and each, yeah, well, each, and each well is going to take probably two days to drill. So even though there is a lot of material coming out, it's going to be each well will be a two, uh, probably a two or three day process. So. They'll, they'll be able to keep up with it, but I, I can show us a, a stockpile area on the plan. It'll be outside the 100 feet. Yeah, we, we have the, t this is Joe Lynch again. I, I think we have the tail wagging the dog. I heard an underlying requirement in an, an, an agreement to, to, to such that no mud will be tailgated out to Mass Ave. And, 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 and I think we all agree with that. So when you've got six wells with soaking wet slurry coming up that's stockpiling to the, to the order of you know 560 cubic feet in a mountain you can't have a landscape but loaded into a truck and tailgate mud down mass Ave, which is what you just said's going to happen because there's no landscape that's going to tight enough tailgate to make that happen so wow. it's going to decant on site it's going to dry out on site and then it's going to be moved out and that stockpile is going to be huge and it's going to be in the way and i'm asking a valid question and we're not, it, we're, all we're getting is the answers that give us more questions. And it's, going to, it's going to take a long time to dry. It's not like overnight. That's, that's why I say decanting. Exactly. We're talking about a week, you know, covered for it to, to, to get dry enough to tailgate it out. Right. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's not well thought out, I'm afraid. So that, that's it. That's it on that. I think. I think we spent an hour on this, uh, Mr. Chairman, unless we have new information, I, I request that we continue this. There's a lot of information they need to think about and present to us. And because um, it's this plan, we're just not there yet, in my opinion. Agreed. Uh, I, I, I agree. I, I um, just to give it a little, uh, Jack some direction, I would strongly suggest, I, I normally ask for one anyway from the plan, but you said there was no need for stockpiles at the beginning. Uh, 
I, you got to put a stockpile on on the plant for sure. And and okay. I, I'll be truthful. I, I, uh, Jack, I think you should s send the applicant by. Uh, I, I don't even know the name of it. I think it's the Park of an Art House on Oscar Street, where you like you going to the old fire station on the right. Possum Bottom. What is it? Possum Bottom. Bonnet House. Yeah. They, they, they redid the barn and they put a little post on the old fence. And they were very reluctant to do that. And then they, they came around and they said, Boy, that looks really nice. And I'm like, We would like, Yeah, that's what we were trying to tell you. And they were saying the expense was originally was astronomical and it wasn't a fraction. With the, whoever told them the money was was talking that he had no idea. But I I, I think I think you going to meet a lot of resistance because you get got snow plowing operation also to go push right up the park line into the wetlands. Uh, so I, I would I would look I would definitely consider the the, uh, the fence um, especially when you're asking for a waiver and and, and then address the uh, the stockpile. Okay, could I could I ask the commission one thing? And I know we've been on for an hour. What what do people think of Jack's suggestion on relaxing the 25 and imposing like a 10 10 foot zone with with some sort of barrier and then we could have plantings in that area? Did, did, that, did that sound like something the commission could support? A, a, a barrier? What kind of barrier? I I, I don't think so. I, I myself I would say no. But the commission, I'll put up. I'll, I'll go. I'll go along the board. Joe, would you be comfortable with that? I. This is this is a difficult part to do from a, a remote meeting. So, right, Jack, I'm I'm looking at your plan, and you've got a a, a diagonal uh, cutout of the of the of the patio area. I, I think in the area where the patio is closest, we want to maintain that 25 foot no disturb. However, once you get back towards the, what I'm going to call the rear wing, you could you could then turn that back into the 10 foot area. And as you get to the left wing, as I'm looking at the plan, you put that back to the, the area. So the area closest proximity to the patio, I think we want to see as much buffer zone as we can. And that would be the area of no disturb, but relaxing everything else, I'm, I'd go along with. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lou, if, if I could just yeah. add, um, right now that area is being mowed all the time. Um, if we would put a barrier, say a low set stone wall, uh, set back 10 feet from the wetland line, um, we would actually be gaining that as a no disturb zone where it where it, where it is being disturbed now. Uh, so so that would actually be a gain for the commission. That that was kind of the the reasoning behind my suggestion. Um, and I wanted to be brief because I know we're going very long. But um, the, you know we we would actually gain um, treatment from the buffer zone into the wetland um, with. Uh, a restoration of with the establishment of a say a 10 foot um, no disturb zone uh, it would have to be mowed like once a year to, to prevent woody vegetation um, but it would but it would maintain it would in, it would enhance the quality of our no disturb zone as it stands right now so um, okay. I, I know so anyway I, I wanted to get that out so that you know, Amy and Jack can hammer this out and we can come up with something that's going to work for everybody. Very good. Al, you comfortable with what Jack suggesting? Um, I'm, I'm actually, I thought when I first heard this an hour ago, I thought I heard enhanced plantings. I thought we were going to maintain the integrity of the 25. Um, uh -huh. I'm in favor of maintaining the integrity of the 25. I have no problem with once a year mowing to prevent woody vegetation. Um, but that's the position I have. Uh, I, I, I think the uh, integrity of it has to be maintained, and we limit the mowing to once a year uh, with, with enhancement plantings. That would be my position. Okay. Thank you. Sean? Wait, sorry, Deb, 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 I'm sorry. Deb, I, Deb. Okay. Deb. I, I, agree, I agree with Al's uh, assessment. Okay. Uh, Sean? Mm -hmm. So 
if they, if they do all the way to the 25, they're going to be going right up into the building. And um, as much as I appreciate trying to keep that 25, that's, that's different than the existing conditions that exist out there. I appreciate Jack's thoughts about 10 feet. Um, as I look at the building on, on the diagram, it's almost like you can attach the two ends of those buildings on a straight line. When I say the two ends, I should say the corners of the building, if, if you, the two closest corners to the wetlands. And if there's some way we can get a permanent barrier, and as I look at one, one end, it says 19.9 inches. And as I look at the other end, that doesn't have a distance to it, but it, it looks to be further away than that. Um, if we can get a permanent barrier up there and then maintain the integrity of everything on the other side of the barrier with wetland markers, um, and something I would feel comfortable with realizing all the details we already talked about, the change of use of the building, the intended use of the building, and all that other stuff. Okay, thank you, Sean. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm in agreement, Jack, I'm in agreement with uh, Sean. I think we should put a permanent barrier and, uh, and, and you offered to move the patio that it was more than, like, like you said, 27, 28 feet. Uh, I'm never problem with that. So you, you've heard the input from the commissioners, uh, and we're gonna so we're gonna continue to the next meeting because I I don't think it's gonna be agreed upon tonight. And we have an issue with the slurry of, of and the stockpile on the plan. Uh, yep. So uh, so we're gonna con we'll continue to the next meeting. Can I can I just uh, ask one question? Yes. Um, so I just want to make sure I understand the extent of um, joining the new pavement with the old pavement and if there's going to be repaving proposed. Anyone Amy, taking that? Amy, Amy where is, it? is that in the that back of the building where the parking lot is going to be? Right. Yeah, uh, I think that that's, well, ultimately we're gonna put new paving in there. Uh, and, uh, but uh, only the handicap uh, area and the walkway, I think are in the, within the um, jurisdictional area. Um, and actually that Jack hasn't designed it yet for what the parking is gonna be, but that was the intent was shown on, on his plan to try to create some additional, uh, normal parking layout back there and if we have enough money we'll pot we'll pave it but i'm hoping that for the fundraising will pr produce enough so that we'll have enough money so we can repave that area back there because as uh, james said right now it all pitches the wrong way we've got uh, uh manholes there and drains but um only a poor it only drains a portion of it and about half of it goes in, uh, toward the building well, if they're, they're extending the park a lot, Amy, I'm sure they're going to pay at some point. So, uh, that, but we have to continue anyways. But okay. we, we, yep. we got enough we got enough information from to two Jack. He knows what what the commission is looking for. Um, well, we have we have a very diverse commission. Uh, what 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 everybody wants, but <clears throat> but it's, you know let him find out a me mediation point, and we'll go from there. That sounds okay. fair. Yep. All right. All right. So we uh, need a motion to continue. So moved. That was second. Bad. Okay. Yep. We need a second. Second by Jack second. Maven. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. And that's, that's unanimous. Thank you, Jack. And thank the applicant. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so our next, we'll continue to our next meeting is the, I think it's the April 22nd. Okay, thank you, Amy. Okay, thanks. Okay, so uh, next up, we have a request for a uh, modification to an existing order of conditions. Uh, the commission will recall recently issuing an order uh, that 
governs uh, reconstruction of existing boulder retaining wall uh, that is failing. And the original uh, proposal was to reuse existing boulders uh, to reconstruct the wall. Um, they have submitted a revision that involves a recon uh, block wall as opposed to reusing the boulders there. Uh, I know we have uh, Greg Hockmuth on with us uh, as the applicant's representative. And Greg, I'll hand it over to you for if you want to um, talk about the footing. All right, oh, hold on one second. I just want to refresh the commission's memory. Uh, this was the, uh, the uh, applicant applied for to, the one that run the excavator over two neighbors' uh, property used, and and they they were reluctant to do test pits, and and it was was took a while. I don't know if you guys remember it, but I just want to give some background. And uh, and they wanted to they change they wouldn't build a walk wall, and then now they changed it. Then they want to put a uh, block wall. And they want to use some of the boulders in the foundation, in the footing, you know, down below with subgrade. And I told them no, so because that would tend to would possibly crack the wall. You don't want to put rocks under under uh, under under the subgrade. <clears throat> so that that's where we're at right now. So with that with that being said, we'll have Mr. Hawkins give you an idea of what's going on. But that that's the project that we're looking at. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, Amy. Can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, Greg, for the record, uh, Greg Hockmuth from Williams and Sparagis, representing the applicant for the minor modification request for 60 Leanne Drive. Um, as Amy and Lou pointed out, uh, back in October of last year, we submitted a notice of intent application to uh, repair a, a failing retaining wall. Um, the contractor at the time wanted to work with the existing materials on site, essentially dismantle what's there and rebuild it. Um, in November of 2019, we secured an order of conditions. Um, now that he's had a chance to actually think about what we have approval for, he realizes that it's a lot more work than he had anticipated. So now he's going to what makes a lot more sense in our eyes, which is just a, a block wall. Uh, so we've requested a minor modification to uh, construct a recon block wall slightly in front of the existing wall, because the idea now is to keep the bulk of the existing wall in place, remove the top two feet, and then uh, loam and seed and stone in accordance with the uh, detail that we show on our plan in between the two walls. So the existing wall should hold the bulk of the force that's pushing against it. And the new wall um, has been designed and engineered so it, it could hold all of it, but there won't be as much force on the new wall uh, now that we're keeping the existing wall behind it. Uh, we did do some test pits out there. And I think originally some of the commission members had thought that there was a ton of peat out here. What we found was about a foot of fill on top of a buried A layer, a buried B layer, and then we found a stable C layer down around 18 to 24 inches. Um, it was a fine sandy loam material, so it should have no issue at all supporting the wall that we're requesting the modification for. Um, as Lou pointed out, the original modification request came in um, with the contractor wanting to utilize some of the material he was removing from the top of the existing wall um, and if possible use some of that for the proposed base uh, but we submitted a revised narrative today that eliminated that from the request so the portion of wall that's being removed is truly getting removed from the site it won't be used on site and a minimum six inch stone base um, is proposed now below the existing block wall. So I, I think overall it's a much better design. It should be a lot cleaner, a lot neater. They won't be in there mucking around as much. Um, so I think that's why we feel as though this should be a, a minor modification and not a formal amendment. 
Very good, very good, Greg. We, we told you so. <laughs> yeah. You I'm glad someone said that. <laughs> Nobody wanted to listen. <laughs> that's exactly uh, where we were. I guess that's a that's a poll of our world agreement. <laughs> well, one thing, too, I wanted to – I'm sure you guys are going to have some questions, but one thing I wanted to request is originally, you know, we talked a lot about this dewatering basin. I think it's important to still have a dewatering basin in the plans. Um, but now that he's not going to be down there mucking around and pulling out boulders, and uh, I don't know that it, it makes sense to construct it prior to construction, maybe just construct it if it's needed. Firstly, now that, now that you have gone without uh, digging up the old wall, I, 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 as long as you have a, a, a dewatering spot in the plan, I'm com com I'm comfortable with that. Uh, let's see what Jack okay. has to say. Jack. Yeah, thanks, Lou. Um, I I guess you know my my main question is more of a it's not an engineering question. It's more of a logical question. If the existing wall is failing, um, and then you're going to reuse most of it, all except for the top of it, um, how, how is how is that going to I mean, how's that going to work? It, um, I don't have the details in front of me, but it sounds like uh, you're putting a good base under a under a block wall, segmented block wall, in front of the existing failing boulder wall. Um, so, if that existing boulder wall fails, uh, how's that going to prevent that failure from just pushing right through the uh, the segmented block wall? So really good question. Um, so I think what I should have said is even without that existing retaining wall being kept in place, the wall that we're designing would hold the whole backyard. So if anything, the uh, failing wall that's there now will hold back some of the force that's pushing against it. So even without that wall, Jack, it would still um, hold back the whole yard, the new block wall. But by keeping the it there, it actually helps uh, take some of the load off the the new wall that's being proposed. Yeah, I, I get it. I'll I think I'll have to defer to uh, the the fellows on the commission that are smart about uh, structures and uh, and earth movement, and um, I'll, I'll probably go with them. Thanks, Greg. I, I'm all I'm all set, Lou. All right, thanks, Jack. Joe. Yes, my microphone is on. Um, Greg, you actually did make mention of the the uh, structural integrity of the existing wall, even though compromised, it still has some capability of holding back lateral earth pressure. But um, what I think you did, didn't elaborate on is you're not just going to build this new wall freestanding. You're going to fill in the area between the compromised stone uh, rock wall and the new wall, you're going to fill that in and backfill it with other materials. So it wouldn't be like a catastrophic failure of the rear wall pushing the other one over. They would act in a in a in a, in a simultaneous contiguous fashion. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And with regards to the de the only other question I had is following up on the dewatering question is uh, now that you have done the test bits and we know where the various uh, horizons are and the and where you encountered groundwater um, do you feel that excavating out to meet the structural design for the mate uh, for the new block wall gets you down into the uh, water uh, groundwater area are you going to be well above it we think we're going to be well above it the uh, current wetland elevation is down around elevation 81 and the toe of the existing wall is roughly elevation 92. So even assuming uh, some somewhat of a gradient going down the slope towards the wetland, when we dug down two and a half, three feet, we still had upland soils with no sign of water when we did our, our test pits at the base of the existing wall. Uh, we're proposing a six inch minimum uh, gravel base but the reality is we'll probably be down a little bit more than that, probably more like a foot. And like I said, we dug down three feet, didn't see any sign of water at all. 
and, and these aren't you know the small landscape uh, blocks. These these are the you know quarry size blocks. You know two and a half, three footers, the big ones, right? So there's there's three different sizes. The bottom one is 45 inches. Um, the next two are 39 inches. Then there's three two footers. And okay. the but, it, but bottom not like a landscape block. Inches. These these are these are the structural block walls. That's in, right. in, uh, yeah. with, with, in gravity, no, no, um, no tiebacks, you know, behind them required. Not, um, not for this height, but um, this wall system that we're going with does have the tiebacks if, if you get to a certain height, and we didn't reach that height. Okay, good. And so that's a pretty. What I'm driving at is it's a pretty much standard spec. So the bottom of that wall has to be set on you know good, well drained gravel, but that has to be on good sound structural material so are you are you needing to dig down through the a and b horizons to find that structural material are you down that you know two feet deep and and if if you are even in your test pit did you find any any evidence of groundwater remodeling at that depth so we are going to remove the thin layer of fill that's at the base of the existing wall we're going to remove the a and the b layer down to the c layer um, the C layer right now is down about two feet. Uh, when we did our test pits, we dug down about three feet and didn't see any sign of uh, modeling. Okay. So with that being said, uh, a standby dewatering setup is I'm, I'm okay with. I don't think you need to construct one uh, preemptively. I'm all set. Okay. Al? I'm here, and uh, I've been listening intently. I really don't have any questions on this right now. All right. Deb? Uh, no questions at this time. The questions sure. that I did have were answered. Thank you. I'm sorry. What's that, Deb? I said the questions that I did have about the wall and the water were answered. Okay. So I Sean? That. Uh, What's that? I didn't hear that, Sean. Right again? Uh, no <laughs> questions. Okay, uh, need a motion? I move that we consider this a minor modification and to update the record with the revised plan. Second. Second. I can. All those in, <laughs> all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, everyone, and be safe out there. You, you too. 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 Okay, Amy, fire away. All righty. So we have um, two enforcement order. All right, who's scribbling? Me. Someone needs to mute. <laughs> Whoever's scribbling needs to mute. <laughs> um, so we've got um, enforcement order violations. Uh, so 410 Summer Street was the pool rehab project that uh, we are waiting for a notice of intent for, they're ready to submit. Um, and I want to, after we're done with the next one, I want to talk to the commission about accepting applications and holding hearings. Um, so I guess I would recommend continuing 410 Summer Street enforcement situation to um, the last meeting in May. Last meeting of May. Yep. So, is that what you said? Yeah. Okay. Um, um, okay. Like that's, like mm -hmm. I said, Amy, I, I was just I was just cons I, I hate to penalize the applicant because of what we have going on with the coronavirus, and uh, and I think he'd be anxious to use this pool. But you're saying he's not too excited about moving forward, so then then I don't have an issue with it. So he wasn't. Get... You, yeah, he didn't seem too upset about just holding off. Um, but we should have discussions generally about, you know, pending applications. So. Okay. Are we going to do that immediately, okay. or, or do you want to do that now? Yeah, is that Sean. Yes. Yeah. This, did, right. did everybody see in the packet the um, the summary that Copeland and Page? Uh, issued with regards to land use permitting deadlines and extensions, because I think most of our guidance is contained pretty cleanly in, in that document. And um, 
and I, I think we can't and ought not to hold up applications, but there needs to be a process that is reasonable put to both the applicant and to us. But I think there's also um, some requirements under under this emergency legislation that uh, that obligates us to perform in a certain timetable. Correct. Okay. I see. But but I, I are you comfortable? This this applicant is it, it's not going to make any difference. It's just that it, it, first of all he started it without getting anything. Uh, then we went to a, an enforcement order, and now uh, it's been a few months. It was all winter. We made him cover up the dirt, and and uh, I, I'm, I'm sure he wants to use his pool this summer. So if it's an approval application, I, I, I hate putting it off. Yeah, this is Sean. I would say if an applicant wants to go forward, then we should definitely give him or her or them that opportunity. I try. To, I prefer to try to get as much done as we can, as long as um, the applicant isn't prejudiced in the process, and as long as it complies with the court orders that Joe was talking about. Well, we have, we have to continue this one anyways because of uh, he's not there. Uh, he, also, also or he's not on the phone. I don't. I don't think he is. Um, no, no. So well, this one here. But moving forward, I think I think uh, we should be uh, like, especially with septic systems. I mean, that, we shouldn't hold people up uh, because we can't meet. Yeah, let's. Uh, what I'm what I'm referring. To, does everybody have the Copeland page document, KP law document in front of them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So right at the bottom of the first page, it's a filing of an application for a permit. So notwithstanding any contrary provisions of the state or local law, the act allows the electronic filing of applications. Uh, these electronic applications are deemed to be filed as the date uh, is received by the city to town clerk. So I, I think if an applicant were to be so inclined to just simply file it electronically, we have no choice. It's filed. Now, once it's filed, you then have the next paragraph was when you when and how you open a hearing, et cetera, et cetera. So I think there's some um I think they can file them on time. I think we can not uh, not conduct the hearing right off the bat. I think we can we can wait until forty five days after this emergency is lifted. I'm not that that's what the law provides, but I'm not sure that that is in the interest of of protecting wetlands or allowing applicants to get things done, especially someone who just cited septic systems. I mean, but where do we draw the line? Also on top of that, Joe, is just trying to not put everything off. So then when all of a sudden this order is lifted, we have 200 matters in our next, next agenda. So I would say that for all reasons, whether it's the applicants driven or, or otherwise, if we can go forward and there's no prejudice to the applicant and they don't oppose it, and let's try to handle it. First, that's that's my perspective. That, that's what we're doing at work uh, in, in Bolton. We're doing that exactly. We're, we're close to the public. Applicants are still being applications are being processed. Their their permits are being issued. Uh, all of that, uh, notwithstanding social distancing requirements, we're, we're doing all the things that we need to do to make life go on as best we can under times like these. Um, that's that's not to say that we're going to put ourselves in harm's way by any by any means and in the same token it's not a it's not the wild west we're not we don't want the public to even begin to think think this is an opportunity for the for things to just get done by magic i think we need to keep business going as reasonably close to the way we've always done it as makes sense i, yeah, I would agree with that too I uh, I think where th this particular uh, this particular application uh, we have been working actively with the applicant and his engineers for months, uh, you know, based on the enforcement order. And um, I, as Lou said, I think you know I think it's I think it's pretty clear that they've been cooperative and doing what we've asked, and and their and uh, their application is going to be you know, pretty near approvable uh, once we receive it. So I'm in agreement with that, that position as well. Okay, well, at least at least so, now we, we, we know where we're heading. Maybe. With so would, would, the, 
would the commission want to limit the number of public hearings per agenda in this format? I think we have the discretion to do that. I, I agree. This is Joe again. Uh, we definitely have the discretion. I don't think we do it as a matter of rule. I think as a situation arises, we may need to do it under under very specific criteria. But uh, I think we're not there yet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Same, sure. token, we spent, we, same token, we spent an hour on a patio. <laughs> Right. Yeah, there was a little, there's a little bit more more to that, but we, we, let's not yeah, get into it now. Disagree. Joe, I would say we spent an hour with a waiver of our 25 foot. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Well, there was there was there was there was a, there was slurry and water issues too, and I and I think Mr. Manzi would have been very unhappy if it was mud all the way down quite a common. Well, I I, yeah. I I hope I I certainly hope that I'm not the only one that would have been unhappy with that. But, oh uh, no, yeah. I would have been unhappy. Yeah. Yeah. I would have been unhappy. I, I, I think that I think that uh, Joe, Joe's point is well taken. Uh, the remote meetings uh, put us at a disadvantage, and uh, yes. so so yeah, we have to uh, and 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 also the discussion we had earlier about uh, when when should Amy uh, go out and inspect and when should she not. This whole thing is going to be it's going to going to be a handicap for us. So yeah, I, I don't know if I have the answer, but uh, I, I agree that we're, we're definitely in a different spot. Right. And, and Amy, I'm, I'm making my comments from a practical conservation commission member with uh, only a wife at home and no no family. So I, I have no idea what your other pressures are. Are you homeschooling? Are you remor working almost always remotely from home? Uh, do you do you have core yeah. hours in town that you need? I don't know any of that. So, so that all kind of factors into the equation, right? Well, yeah. I mean, that, that, that should all be taken up between Amy and the chair and not on public television. Understood. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. As far as Amy starts telling what her family like, just like. Yeah, no, hundred percent agreed. We we need to we need to just uh, handle what's on the agenda and get it done here. Okay. Yeah. But, but okay. It's, it's, All right. This is this is Jack. It, it sounds like what we're agreeing on is is handling these situations on a case by case basis, and 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 I think we're gonna. I, I think it might make sense that our judgment might pan out that we would not take on uh, you know a, an extremely uh complex project that does not have to be opened immediately um that 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 you know that would put us at a at a disadvantage at even more of a disadvantage than we're at right now with these remote meetings uh but but for easier ones uh ones that are a little bit more straightforward no waivers things like that um you know, it might be it might be reasonable for us to be as productive as possible and, and get these things on the docket and, and get them through. Well, we had an easy one tonight that took an hour, so I'm I'm concerned about what the definition of easy. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that easy, but I mean, I, I, it was a 400. A, I'll re, I'll reserve comment for later. Um, well, I think I think my main concern would be just the the public hearing public participation aspect that you know email is not something that everyone can do uh so you know if we if we know that there's a project that's particularly contentious that have you know a cross section of people that maybe wouldn't be able to participate the way they usually do that's you know that's not fair on that end as well so yeah well, we'll just take it so, one week at a time, I think. Okay. Okay. All right. Actually, on, on that All point, right. Amy, a, tech, a technicality on that point is we have a submission of document requirements seven days before the meeting, and that's to allow the public opportunity to review it. So how do they even review it to make a comment? Well, I mean, we, How does the public have, have access? If they don't have email access, how can they can, – they certainly can't look at documents remotely, right? They can go on well well they we have all of our meeting material as links on our agendas, so they can they can go to the website, pull up the agenda, and they're live links to all the materials so yeah, you know if people don't have computers, then they're at a disadvantage correct um, so so i'm a I'm a seventy five year old person who's never used 
technology ever, and I got something in the mail. They yeah. call the office, because that's probably what it right. says, right? Well, right. How does their question get in? How do they get addressed when they say, I would like, a, I received this, I'd like to see the plans, and I can't mm-hmm. do that electronically? How's that answered? Right. First of all, is the phone, so, is the phone answered remotely? Yes. So all of our calls are being forwarded to our email. So we do get whoever calls us, we, we get their calls, their messages, and we call them back. So we are in communication um, since the get-go with anybody who, who needs us. Um, so I, I guess that's a good question. How do we accommodate that that? So I, I think we modify our pub, I think we pub, modify the public notification process a language yes. that yes, includes absolutely. something to the effect during this pro, during this crisis. Please, if you can't access electronically, please call and for follow up. Yep. If we no, if we put that point. in the notice, I think we've covered that base. No, good point. Yep. And when when I fully intended to modify our public, I mean our about our notification form for all of this. So that's a good point. Okay. All okay. Right. So, all right. What's next? So we'll just vote to continue 410 summer in terms of the enforcement to, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. We we'll, can, we'll, we'll issue the enforcement order, but tell him to file for his NOI the next meeting. No, I will. Meeting. I will absolutely. Yeah, I'll encourage him to do that. Yep. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, we so we'll continue. To, you want two weeks of two weeks or four weeks, Amy? What do you what do you want on this one? Oh, uh, we let's just do two weeks now that we know we're going to give him the green light. Okay, so moved. Second. Second. Yeah. All those all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. That's unanimous. Okay. And so then the last one is 1806 Salem Street, and that was an enforcement letter, enforcement order for. Uh, expansion of a driveway um so i was supposed to get back out there to do some measurements to figure out if he could reconstruct the existing driveway within the same dimensions outside the 50 and therefore be a small project permit i haven't been able to get out there but um with your direction you know i i will do that using ppe Okay. Uh, for, uh, question. Uh, I have some input on that. Uh, first of all, yep. I think it should be an RDA. Uh, second of all, because I'm sure there's going to be conditions, I'm, I'm not familiar with the project, but a new driveway or an existing driveway, I'm sure he's going to widen it, turn it, whatever. Huh. Uh, and second of all, I think we should leave the enforcement order in place till the next meeting. Because I, I I think we should talk about this one more, and I, I I'd like to wait in two weeks before we have him go out. Because they say that these two weeks are supposed to be real bad for people to go out. If you, if you can avoid not going out, the better. So why play Russian roulette? We we'll wait. We can wait two weeks. Hopefully that this coronavirus will be better, and Amy can go out with with, with some with some level of confidence. No objection. None here. Agreed. Great. Okay. So, so we leave, leave the enforcement order in to the next meeting. Okay. And, and then within that two weeks, maybe we'll get some good news from the governor or the president, and uh, maybe we'll get some of our life back. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank All right. you. All right. We need a motion. Move so to move. continue. Wait. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's unanimous. Okay. Great. And that's all we have. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, and that's aye. unanimous. We are, adjourned. we are adjourned. Thank, okay. thank you guys. Good night, thank everybody. Stay much. safe. Thanks, everybody. Thank you too. Thanks, Thanks for the everyone. good time. Bye. You guys. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> good night. So so you're going to withhold your comment, Mr. Manzi, I take it. <laughs> I think he's gone, though. <laughs> as long as we, we can still talk, though we can't talk, that's right, because we've got a majority, a quorum, I should say. Right. All right. right.
I'll All see right. You next, Take care, Lou. We'll talk, talk to you Bye-bye. later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.